Hey Summoners, and welcome back to another Rift Guys Wild Rift video. The new season recently started, so it's time to give you some advice on how you climb. We are going to release a series of guides about climbing, and those will feature a lot of different topics and obviously all roles. And in today's video, we are going to talk about how you climb as a mid laner. Before we jump into specifics, let's briefly talk about an overall mid lane overview. What champions are you about to see and play? For one, you have the poke champions who are insanely hard to punish if they are played properly. Next to those, we have the burst heavy champions that love to all in. You may further divide those two classes into the T1 protectors and the roamers. The first is going to mainly sit on mid lane and so golden experience to safely farm and scale into the later stages of the game. The latter try to accelerate the game. They want to move away from their lane and impact other lanes as much as possible. But how do they do this? Lane priority. In Wild Rift, you have seen it plenty of times. Laners just leave their lane without giving a single damn about the minion wave. Spoiler though, that is not how it's supposed to be. In an ideal world, you crash your wave into the enemy tower and create yourself a roaming window. In this window, the enemy champion cannot do anything to punish you. The next incoming minion wave is simply too far away and there's nothing the enemy laner can accomplish. However, he may try to chase after you, which could be his death sentence. T1 protectors are usually very weak against those bursty champions and once we get into a face check situation, they just end up dying. The biggest strength of a T1 protector is being able to influence the fight from afar. Therefore anything similar close to close quarter combat is a risk that is almost always followed by death. As a consequence, the Roma usually has the laning agency early on or acquires it at a later specific level. But what does this agency translate into? With the mid lane being the centerpiece of the map, everyone is able to influence that lane. But what about the mid laner influencing the other lanes? What if the Roma is constantly able to move to other lanes while his lane opponent cannot do such a thing? The T1 protector cannot even dream of chasing a Roma into the fog of war and is therefore forced to either sit mid lane or lock for a proactive play on the other side of the map. And let me tell you this, if you want to win most of your games playing mid lane, one of the most important things is having a good matchup. Yes, you can win every matchup by just being better than your opponent, but having a champion that is substantially better than your opponent is really a game changer. So champions such as Akshan and Zed are absolute mid lane terrorists. Those champions are not balanced in any way and crush most of their matchups without having any issue. Before we continue, it's time for our question of the day. What is the most broken first item you can think of and why? Let me know in the comments below and if you want to see the rest of the How to Climb series, you should leave a like and subscribe to the channel. With that out of the way, let's quickly talk about something more personality oriented. The most beneficial traits of a character as well as a quick description of your job in mid lane. So you want to play that role? Then you should be passionate about gathering the most information possible. The more you know about what's going on around you, the better. Ideally, you'll create a little guide of strategies for yourself so you're not forced to come up with a makeshift strategy in the heat of the moment. That way you'll be able to save up a lot more cognitive resources which will enable you to acquire and process even more relevant information around you. After all, you can only make the best and consistent decisions thanks to a massive load of information. However, playing this role brings a certain amount of responsibility with it. Since you are the centerpiece of the map and everything kind of happens around you, you also have to accept that you are able to influence most of it. For that point, I could quote an old movie that maybe a few of you are familiar with. With great power comes great responsibility. Playing mid lane will most definitely put some pressure on you. But that isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can be a curse, but it can also be a blessing. It all depends on you and your ability to work around that pressure. You can do so because everyone can, but some learn it faster than others. Nonetheless, your primary goal for the mid lane is centered around reading and initiating rotations in the most optimal fashion while dealing with minion waves. Next up, let's talk about who shouldn't think of playing mid lane. Mid lane is not about outplaying your opponents on cooldown. It's about generating consistent advantages and punishing your opponents for their mistakes. Another thing that is going to ruin your success as a mid laner is having bad vision control and a lackluster understanding about how to play around that vision. Don't forget that as the centerpiece of the map you're attracting the most attention and need to be ready to respond at any given time. Now let's talk about more specific concepts for the mid lane that you'll need. We are going from the easiest and most fundamental concepts towards the more complex ones. 
those are going to be the difference between a rank 1 player or just another Grandmaster. For the most fundamental concepts, we are farming as our first. Depending on the matchup, be it ranged versus ranged or melee versus ranged, it's important to understand the do's and don'ts. The primary goal here is to get the most gold without paying a lot of resources in the form of HP and mana. While doing that, it's also important to keep aware of your opponent's possible ways of poking you. Therefore, avoiding skill shots should be another thing that is fundamental to your toolkit for mid lane. The very last fundamental thing for mid lane or generally laning is understanding how you're supposed to last it under tower. Pay close attention to the tower and his shots. Don't get over eager, be patient and observe until you're sure that you can get those last hits. Every bit of gold matters, it really does. Next up comes the intermediate tier for mid lane concepts. The very first one is Scuttle Control. When does this little fella spawn and what do you have to do in order to help your jungle secure it? Alternatively, you can also deny the enemy jungle from getting a crab. Both works. As the clock hits 1 minute and 25 seconds, this crustacean inhabitant emerges from the river and soon after a vicious battle royale unleashes. The loser of this battle usually loses his mental and wants to surrender almost immediately. To avoid this from happening on your side of the team, you are going to learn how to deal with the wave briefly before this fight takes place. But dealing with the wave isn't only something we do for the scuttle crab. We also do it for rotational plays and here it's important that we learn to identify when we want to roam and how to pull that off. For that, we have a little checklist. Before you go anywhere, look at the position of the enemy on another lane. Take into consideration what the enemy champion can do and where he is and the wave is and how likely the play is going to work out in your favor. If you come to the conclusion that it's a good idea, you have now to think of the necessary steps before you walk there. Is your wave already cleared and if not, how much gold would you lose or rather how much gold would your lane opponent gain from your rotation? In some situations, you might end up getting the kill, but in the end you'll lose more gold than you gain, at least in direct comparison to your enemy laner. Minions grant a lot of gold and not only that, you have to also think about the minions he last hits and the ones you won't get. Experience and gold really start to matter and in the worst case scenario you'll also gain access to turret plates. So please be aware of the consequences of your actions before you thoughtlessly run off to some faraway coin flippy play. The next intermediate concept is something that comes after you're able to maintain your HP values on a relatively healthy level. Learning when and how to all in. Identifying the enemy's cooldowns is one of the most important things to track. Every single time the enemy uses them thoughtlessly, it's time for you to punish them. Obviously only if you can. And it's also important to understand how to sequence your abilities. Don't just throw them at them for fun. Use them with reason and think about the strongest sequence you can come up with. Take things like counterplay into consideration and don't assume that your opponent is bad, even though it might be true. For an example, why would you use any skill shot when your Twisted Fate has a targeted stun that cannot be avoided? Just wait for it to hit and then shoot out your spell. It's a little thing, but mostly overlooked and underused. With the intermediate tier done, we are now moving over to the advanced concepts. Those that really make the difference when you are aiming for the top of the ladder. First, we have cheating with vision, but what does this exactly mean? Placing a ward is just not about putting it down. It's about using it in the best way possible. Let's think of the early game and the enemy jungler such for example a Lee Sin. It would be borderline suicidal to walk into his jungle to place down an early ward. Therefore you have to adjust your very early wards according to the champions you're facing. Ideally you want to protect your own jungle's entrance as well as the direct way to a lane. After getting that one down you also need to play around it. Let's say you place a ward on the very edge on the wall of the river's entrance. This ward is going to tell you if anyone is approaching from the river and the jungle. And if you want to make this ward even stronger, all you have to do is hover towards your already established vision. The more distance you put between you and the fork of war, the better for you. That way you'll have more time to respond to any approaching enemy and just walk it off without having to invest any type of resources. The next thing you have to be aware of is your champion's desired mode. Do you want to crash a wave and rotate, or do you want to keep the wave as close as possible to your tower and force the enemy champion to overextend? Let's take Zed as an example here. He's not the strongest in the super early game, especially level 1 and 2. Therefore it would be way too risky and pointless to try and shove the first two waves into the enemy tower. 
If the enemy jungler is aware of your lackluster wave management, he is able to punish you very easily. That is also why Lee Sin is so annoyingly broken in solo queue. The champion isn't inherently broken or anything, he is just very good at abusing certain things. One of those things is abusing clueless enemies that don't know about the consequences of their actions and the other one would be applying pressure in the form of early ganks and early invades. Keep in mind, if you don't die to a Lee Sin, you're already one step closer to victory. This champion has to get something done early and if he doesn't do so, he is gonna fall off a cliff. Next up is something that is even more important about minions. It's wave management on the side lanes. Remember the part about tier 1 protectors and roamers? Tier 1 protectors usually stay on mid lane. They don't want to go to the side lane as it's too risky and they're losing value there. Remember the last time you were sitting on a side lane and tried to push out a wave? The entire enemy team chased you down and you just died without getting anything done. So what could you have done differently? For that we have to ask ourselves the following question. Was there a specific reason why we pushed that wave? And getting golden experience doesn't count because you're doing nothing but playing ping pong with the enemy team. You clear the wave and the enemy receives the wave. Then this process repeats from both sides. But what about a situation in which there's no objective available? Theoretically speaking, nothing is supposed to happen unless people make mistakes. So why don't we force them to do something? For that I'm referring to a freeze on side lane. Don't let the incoming minion waves crash into the tower. Keep it barely out of range so it fights with your minions. It's very important that the enemy wave is bigger than yours so you'll be able to maintain this state. The enemy minions will slowly kill off your minions while you're just last hitting. And now we come to the rewards of this move. Every caster minion is 40 gold, every melee minion 65 and every cannon 85. Now imagine you keep this up for 1 or 2 minutes until the next objective spawns. Do you realize how much gold you're denying and gaining by doing so? It is absolutely absurd. And even better is the fact that the enemy team has to break this. And they cannot do so alone as it's too risky to do. The last and ultimate strategy to punish mid laners can be called the free wave principle. All of you know that in the early game the first two waves are without a cannon minion and the third one comes with one. Now your goal is to slow push wave 1 and 2 and crash wave 3 including the cannon minion into the tower. This is only reasonable though if you have a champion with an insane lane agency such as Lucian or Akshan. While doing so you are keeping the enemy laner at max range while abusing your pre-placed vision to avoid any fatal disturbances by the enemy jungler. The next step is getting your jungler to come and dive the enemy champion on that massive wave and make it a bit more than just painful. Alternatively, so when you're in lack of a jungler, you may also use this window for a rotational play or a reset. Whatever you end up doing, it's going to be a massive advantage for you, so please use it. And that's a lot of stuff and I think that's enough for now. You'll get something even more detailed in the future, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching and if you like the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to see more upcoming content.